you so much for clicking on this video. While the subject is still fresh, this is the follow-up on my Orchid Lingo dormancy video. Now, I have decided to adapt the structure of this video a little bit more because I have a feeling the next question would be how do I care for these orchids when they're in this stage of their growth cycles. So in this video, we're going to look at some example of resting orchids versus dormant orchids, struggling orchids that are doing the same thing because they are resting, because their conditions are not to their liking, and we're gonna look at signs of growth because not everybody is growing in clear pots, as you can see. <laughs> Root growth is extremely important to also understand when an orchid is coming out of rest mode. It is not always a new growth that triggers the start of the orchid is in active growth. We have to look at root growth as well. But I want to bring it down to a simple point. Based on the question that I posed about a blooming leafless orchid, is it dormant, is it actively growing, or is it heading into dormancy? And the answer to that question is, if there are no leaves on an orchid, it cannot photosynthesize, so it is dormant. The blooms themselves are drawing energy from the reserves of the structures behind it. That is the most obvious to be able to see on Catacetinae but we also have dendrobiums that drop their leaves, bloom on deciduous canes, and then they start their new growth. So my question in that video was not meant to confuse. I do apologize if I've confused anybody. The question was merely, my orchid is blooming. Is it dormant? It's supposed to go dormant. Is it waking up or is it in active growth? What's it doing? And the answer is, if there are no leaves, there is no photosynthesis to a degree that the orchid can be considered actively growing. But the reason I changed the structure of this follow-up a little bit is because there could be also confusion between the words resting and dormant. What is the difference between the two? What makes an orchid dormant? What makes it resting? And I just touched upon the subject of leaves. There is no photosynthesis, therefore the orchid is dormant. What about the ones that are doing nothing but have leaves on them? including that one over there, and we'll get to it. They are clearly photosynthesizing, but they're not doing anything. So they are resting. That is the difference between the two. Dormant and resting can have the same time frame as well, anywhere from six months to nine months. But if an orchid has been hybridized to the hilt because of faster growth, more blooms throughout the year, speeding up metabolism, then all these factors I'm mentioning right now could be out the window. But that is because the orchid and its whole cycle has been tampered with, bringing in more of a parentage that is much more vigorous and floriferous. Orchids already grow slow enough compared to any other plants, to my knowledge, that breeders are also encouraging to get faster growing growths and faster blooming and hopefully two bloomings or three bloomings, depending on your climate, a year. So when we talk about resting and dormant, we really are zeroing in on species or primary hybrids where we can actually see the pattern and habit of a parent doing what it's doing in a primary hybrid, or as is the case in species, it's very evident and obvious they're going to do what they're going to do because there's no interference from any other genes. Now, I'm also going to be talking about the care because the care is very, very similar. And the care also is similar, not just because I'm growing in lecan self-watering, but if you're growing in organic media, same care applies. I've got my Lelia perinii here to the left. This orchid is literally resting for six to seven months of the year. And considering the conditions that we've had in the past six weeks, she is not even coming out of snooze mode yet because I don't have any active root growth. I'm not even expecting a new growth at this point in time. If all goes well, by the end of May, mid-June, that's when we'll see any kind of new growth triggering the active growing period. New roots here should have arrived by January, but again, the conditions aren't favorable. And what does that mean? Resting and dormant orchids do what they do because the conditions become harsher. There is no water. There is no precipitation. They have to survive on the little bit of dew that they might get morning and evening. If there is very, very high airflow, that dew is also very quickly evaporated 
given there is no precipitation, there is also hardly any nutrients that they can draw upon in order to grow. The light is so much harsher as well because the majority of our orchids that are deciduous and go into dormancy or rest mode, they exist in areas where the forests lose their leaves and they get direct sun. And quite often they get hit with more sun during this time of their growth cycle than they ever would throughout the rest of the year. In the case of Rapiculus lalias down here, they of course are on cliffs as a majority, but in the summer they are covered up with grasses and the pampas grass and bushes and all that kind of vegetation. Come the winter, the grasses die off and they are exposed on these dry cliffs to the extreme light that the winter can throw at them. Now granted, the temperatures are lower, but still the light levels increase because the vegetation around them decreases. Very, very stressful time, so they shut down because they only get teeny tiny bits of dew. And imagine how quickly dew evaporates on a rock. So the resting and dormancy period is self-preservation mode. And if the orchid does not get this self-preservation mode in our culture, it can be that the new growths will turn out to be unhealthy, lanky, deteriorate, their structures aren't strong enough because the orchid gets confused. According to its DNA, this is what is supposed to happen. This is what it's supposed to do. Override that and the stress is reversed. It might grow, but it will not be resistant to the conditions within when it is supposed to grow. Going back to the hybrids, we always talk about winter growths being smaller and not as vigorous or as large as summer growth. And if you do that with species or primary hybrids and force them into doing something that they normally wouldn't like to do in our private cultivation, that is going to be a detriment to the orchid. It is a form of stress. Resting them, letting them rest, letting them go dormant gives them the opportunity to do their own inner reset and then hopefully they'll come out of snooze mode and do what they're supposed to do, do it well. Not adhering to the rest period will either be a waste of money stress to the orchid to the point of killing it or result in weak lanky growths that will not be of any benefit to the orchid long term. Now you don't need clear pots to understand what it is that you need to do during your rest period for your orchid. If there is no active growth, there is only the necessity of a trickle of water every once in a while. So I have a leafed dendrobium here. Isn't that amazing? This is Memoria Christa Erdmann. It has its leaves. Normally when we talk about resting dendrobiums or dormant dendrobiums, winter resters, they're deciduous, not in this case. But it is not actively growing. I have no new growths at the base. There is no active root growth either. So this orchid only ever in my setup gets a trickle of water to maintain the dampness of the microfiber. And that is what is also necessarily and required in organic media. In my opinion, an orchid never is without a teeny tiny bit of access to the dew. Because our media doesn't dry out in a Lekka and self-watering setup, a trickle is all that it needs maybe every 10 days, depending on how much airflow is in your environment. When it comes to organic media, the organic media also holds on to water a little bit longer than it would out in nature, but still a little trickle here and there just to simulate the access that they have via the dew. My Schilleriana here has not been doing anything for the past four months either. That is her normal cycle, but she's starting on roots. This is a great indicator for me that, whoa, we are getting close. But one root is not me saying she is an active growth now. There has to be a little bit more happening before I actually then go full on and get her up to speed with fertilizers. But this is a sign. This is all I need to see what my orchid is about to do next. For the past four months, absolutely zip to the naked eye. Because remember, what we can see is different to what we cannot see. The hormones within the orchid are still active. They're doing what they are supposed to do. Some are raging and some are not, as is always very evident in a catacetum orchid. And this was the candidate for my question. It's blooming. Is it an active growth? Is it going dormant or is it dormant? Because as we go back to the thing about is your orchid doing something, what does that mean? Well, in Catacetidae, you have to look at whether it's got leaves or not. It's not photosynthesizing to the potential of being an active growth. So it is drawing the reserves from the structures in order to do the blooming part. 
but the leaves have long dropped. The spikes were forming while the leaves were still on the plant. But the orchid was heading into dormancy while the spikes were forming. So this one is completely dormant right now. No leaves. So why did I bring my little Phalaenopsis out? Well, climatic influences, as I mentioned before, has everything to do with what goes on hormonal-wise with your orchid and how they respond. And that is why resting happens and why dormancy happens. And this is a hieroglyphica hybrid, and it is stressed out to the hilt. It is too cold for it. It doesn't like it one bit. It has done nothing for the past four months as well because the conditions are not favorable. So it is also in self-preservation mode, but in its natural habitat, that doesn't necessarily mean that is what it would do because summer bloomers like it warm. They don't want anything below 20 degrees Celsius. If they can handle 18 degrees Celsius, that is great. That is them being temperature tolerant, but it doesn't mean they like it. Well, mine has had to deal with 15 degrees Celsius, and this orchid is just like, nah, not having it. So just like with any other resting orchid, it is in self-preservation mode, even though it is a Phalaenopsis. And I can assure you, if I were to put it on a heat mat, crank up the temperature to 25 degrees, and give it light for 12 hours every day for the next four, five, six weeks, this orchid would perk up and go, hey, why didn't you do that sooner? Circumstances are a little bit different for everybody's grow environment. We have to keep that in mind as well. It doesn't mean, hopefully, that the orchid is going to die, but this orchid isn't supposed to be resting, and yet the conditions around it have forced it into a rest situation. And that can happen to many orchids in our collection because we are trying to grow orchids that are out of their comfort zone and somehow tweak that in such a way so that we can have them in our homes. So you can see that an orchid that normally would be a continuous grower can actually go into rest mode if the conditions aren't favorable, which proves the point as to why orchids go dormant and are resting. The conditions surrounding even in their natural habitat are not favorable. And for that reason, they go into a rest period or into dormancy. So I've still got my two little pots here in front of you. These are Rapiculus lalias, and they also have a rest period. Seeing as they've got leaves, they're photosynthesizing, they are not dormant, but they have a time frame where they do nothing, at least nothing that we can identify. Once again, hormones are always active. But here's my crispy labia, looking fabulous. But she is resting because there is no activity of new roots and there's no activity of new growths. So the care will be, as I mentioned earlier, a little trickle of water every now and then. But here's another Rapiculus lelia and look, this is my Esalkiana. She is in active growth. And I picked these two because look at the foliage very, very similar. You would think they would be doing exactly the same thing at the same time, but no. Even if you don't know diddly squat about your orchid, research is not everybody's cup of tea. Look above the surface of the pot. What is going on? It gives you the clearest indicator when it is time to increase watering, start with the fertilizer, and then watch the magic happen as the orchid starts to wake up out of rest mode. So the big difference here is resting, you've got leaves, dormant, you've got no leaves. Blooming while dormant, the orchid is drawing energy from the remaining structures. The care, bright light, not to the point of burning the structures, but bright light and a trickle of water every once in a while, just to make sure that we simulate dew point for these orchids that really, really never go without water, including a bletia or any terrestrial orchid that would lose its leaves and then start out fresh when the temperatures rise again. There is a lot of water stored in the surrounding media where they live out in nature, and they do draw from that during periods of drought. A lot of water gets saturated from the dew into the ground where these terrestrial orchids live, and they will draw from that. 
And if you're still with me, thank you very much. If you're thinking about peonies, well, peonies go into the fridge. If we can't give them the cool down that they need in order to be able to go dormant and then survive and then wake up in the springtime, they go into the refrigerator. Now, of course, you say there is no light in the refrigerator, but that would be the worst case scenario if you don't get a climatic cool down for these orchids to be able to do what they do in their pot without us having to lift them. But peonies can take it really, really cold, not to the point of freezing, but really cold. And if a climate doesn't allow for them, it's better to keep them in the fridge from desiccating because the humidity in a refrigerator is also very high and it is colder because that keeps the storage organs intact. And then it wakes up. Now, I had a whole bunch of notes for this video to keep a structure because I can go from one subject to the next and then all of a sudden another question poses in my head that I would like to address, but I call those my rabbit holes. And it's okay for me to go down my rabbit holes, but I do not want you to have to do that as well together with me. It gets messy. So I'm hoping that this video isn't messy. I did take notes for this video before to stay structured. And again, I've deviated away from those notes. I'm gonna accept this video for what it is. And I'm gonna let you tell me whether it made sense, whether it clarified resting dormant and then coming out of resting. And also the fact that six months to nine months, your orchid could be resting and there's nothing you really need to do except give it a trickle of water every once in a while. Just let it know that you're around and you're waiting. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, orchid, I'm here for you to wake up. Let me know in the comments below how you felt about this video. I apologize if I was talking in circles, but I am curious to know your opinion and my attempt to clarify what our orchids are doing, why they're doing it, why they should be doing it, why we should let them do it, and what we need to be doing while they're doing it, and then what we need to look out for and be ready to react when it comes to introducing water and fertilizer. Oh my goodness. Very interested to hear what you have to say. If you've made it this far, I really appreciate it very, very much. Thank you. I really hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for watching and for listening. I wish you a beautiful day on one condition that you stay safe. And I hope to see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.